then this is the last video of my wild hunt series and that is because i have actually been to the event so i have a lot to tell you it was quite an interesting evening if you're new to this channel uh, the wild hunt is a lark that i went to down in hatfield uh, in the south of england uh, i've done a video series showing how i prepped for this event and this is my conclusion telling you all about what happened so if you're not aware the wild hunt is essentially a lark based on the european folklore of the wild hunt uh, if you think it's anything to do with the witcher 3 you are entirely wrong however i can see why your mind went that way it's essentially a gothic horror larp and it is based on the idea that all the members of the wild hunt come together on the eve of beltane and essentially choose a new hunt master for the upcoming year it's full of politics and intrigue and a lot of very interesting characters now this was actually the pilot event that i went to so it had never been run before which always makes things interesting because it means no one has any expectations of what the plot's going to be like, what the mechanics are going to be like. And essentially it's a, you know, jump off a cliff into the unknown. It was also a parlour lap, which I've never actually done before. I've done parlour style events as part of bigger LARP systems, but never done a self-contained parlour lap. If you don't know what that is, essentially parlour LARPs are more role play heavy larps than combat or mechanic heavy there's usually next to no combat in them at all and traditionally they're held uh, over a singular evening in a singular room of whatever location that you're in now as there's many larps in the world um there are obviously variations on this that still count as parlor larps but if you're looking for the most basic traditional definition that's pretty much it and to be honest, the Wild Hunt pretty much hit that nail on the head. It was held on a Saturday night in the Old Palace at Hatfield House, which is probably one of the most beautiful venues I have ever been to. It was held in the Banqueting Hall. Uh, for reference, the Old Palace at Hatfield House is where King Henry VIII sent his three children to be raised. And so it's essentially the royal nursery of England at the time. And the banqueting hall, where the uh, actual event was, was held, is where Queen Elizabeth I held her very first Council of State. So, you know, really getting into the history just from the venue itself, uh, which I'm a massive, massive, like, nerd. I was nerding for it. It was amazing. Just like, yes. So excited to be there. It was beautiful. For reference, it is available for, like, weddings and other events as well. So... If you ever want a really fancy sort of, you know, medieval style building to hold an event in, uh, go for that one. Have a look. It's absolutely, um, it was absolutely amazing. So I had a slight adventure trying to get to the actual event. Uh, I live uh, much further north than Hatfield uh, in England and I decided to get the train. Um, my husband couldn't come with me because we had a slight change in childcare arrangements so i was off on this adventure by myself and there was a slight hiccup because a load of the trains got cancelled due to a uh, lack of available staff uh, which meant for about an hour i ended up getting a train past hatfield and i sat in wood green london for about an hour uh, which was uh, incidentally where my mum grew up but that's completely irrelevant and that was because literally the trains going from where I had been just before Hatfield, uh, going to Hatfield had completely gone. And I essentially had to go to all the way down to uh, this other train station, wait there for a train going back in the opposite direction. But I did eventually get there. I did miss the briefing for the event. So I missed a lot of things, including uh, what the general plan for the evening was. Uh, any sort of basic rules so that was not helpful and I also missed things like you know the safety signal for you know if people wanted to back out role play for any reason uh, which wasn't great because you know that's a great thing to have at LARPs and I was really appreciated that they actually had one but I obviously missed it that didn't matter too much really because when I did arrive uh, I'd only I was only 30 minutes late so essentially the person who met me at the door was very nice and once I got into the game uh, it became very obvious what the um, out of character signal was because someone used it with me and I think in the space of 10 minutes not because I'd done anything wrong they or was interrupting roleplay they just wanted to tell me something out of character 
um, which really helped. So uh, thank you to that person for doing a very quick demonstration for me. It really helped my evening. And yeah, so I arrived and I got to meet all the other Chosen and they got to show me up because they all had way better costumes than I did. I mean, seriously, you've seen my costume. Uh, people told me I look great. They look like something else. Uh, we had this beautiful sort of Viking shield maiden. We had a Highland warrior. Uh, oh God, like, I think an ancient Greek Spartan. I'm not 100% sure, I confess. I did not did not ask and I'm very sorry um, to the person who had that costume because you looked amazing. They all looked incredible, which automatically made me go, yes, this is gonna be such a fun night. And they were all super sweet as well. They all said hi. They all gave me a brief rundown of how we were supposed to actually do this. It was all nice and relaxed. So I just wanna very quickly thank uh, the other chosen players if you're watching this, uh, you were, incredible and definitely the highlight of my night. Um, I hope we all get to roleplay get together again soon because you were all so much fun. So the game itself was really interesting. There were lots of different things going on which helped because there was uh, quite a lot of people there all with their own different roleplay uh, sort of groups and agendas. And that meant it was a little chaotic, but not in a bad way, if you know what I mean. It wasn't like people didn't know what they were doing. It just meant that everybody knew what they were kind of off to do and could kind of mix together in some sort of weird and no ball of chaos and somehow they still ended up coming out of it having achieved what they wanted to do so organized chaos it was great and um, there was things like there was a little shop that i think was being run by the horde who were goblin people and i'll come back to them in a minute there was a weird little sort of table with a game kind of of um a simulation of people running through the woods being hunted by stuff and whoever won was going to be a new member of the Chosen so we were all quite interested in that. There were people around all around trying to acquire different items in the game uh, which was part of the event pack that we were all given at the, when we arrived which had all these sort of little bits in it. Mine had a gem in it and which I, I'll be honest never got around to discovering what that was for and I'm quite glad about that because I forgot about it until literally I got back to my hotel and went oh but there were like cards uh, which represented pieces of your soul which people were trying to trade and collect. There were resource cards which allowed you to help, you know, do votes for different people for like, you know, this electing the new leader of the hunt. Having all these different mechanics definitely meant that everybody had something to kind of do, uh, which made it all very, very interesting. And to give credit to the event organizers, uh, all of their costumes were very on point. When we had characters like the Dark Cards come out and we had sort of this massive sort of prosthetic representation of one of them which was amazing. I think it's from a regular props and is part of their monster menagerie costumes that they can rent out to people uh, which is incredible. And all the different costumes the NPCs were wearing were great. It, aesthetically it looked incredible. I was very very impressed. Mechanics wise it was an interesting game just because like I said there was so much different stuff going on. I'll be honest, I read the rules a few times before I arrived and uh, didn't understand half of them because I didn't couldn't work out how they applied to me or remember them, which made me a little bit nervous. But once I was there, practicality kind of took over and everything was actually really easy because it flowed into each other really well, which you don't see a lot in games. So I thought that was actually really, really helpful. Plus as well, the staff were available uh, throughout the game, which meant if I had a rules query or wasn't sure how something would work, I just went off, found one of them, and they told me immediately. They were incredibly happy to help, and that just made the whole thing really easy. So for reference, if you ever think you look at a game and you see that it looks quite mechanics heavy and looks rather complicated, don't let that entirely put you off because it might be a lot easier once you're actually in person and playing it. But yeah, I did sort of struggle with a little bit. It's like I couldn't remember all the different cards I had did. Um, but again, people explained those to me. And uh, the poison pegs were a little bit frustrating because essentially the horde, who were goblin people, uh, could come around and poison people by putting a little peg on them, which I'll confess I found a little frustrating only because, um, one, they were very good at it, um, which, is a, which I can't hold against them because that's kind of the point. Uh, they were incredibly, incredibly good at just slipping a little peg on you. But two, it was really easy to miss the pegs because they were so small. So some people even got home from the game and found a peg on their clothing and weren't aware that they'd even been poisoned, which seemed a little bit unfair to the Horde people who were so successful. 
but two to me just made the mechanic a little bit too difficult to work with because essentially you didn't know if you'd been poisoned until someone physically pointed out to you that there was a peg on your costume but that's just the way it was of all the people who were there, of all the monsters and these horrors and these amazing costumes, they, the horrors all looked incredible. I was more scared of the goblins because they were so good at just sneaking up on you. I've never been more frustrated and impressed <laughs> at a laugh. So well done, uh, goblin, goblin horde people. Uh, if you're watching, you uh, were definitely the stars of the show in the end, in my opinion. <laughs> One thing I did really appreciate from this game is there was absolutely no form of leveling mechanic that I could see. Essentially, you came into the game and you had an equal chance as everybody else uh, of succeeding at this LARP. There was no sort of real hierarchy between people other than roleplay hierarchy, um, which I quite like because I play a lot of games where there is leveling mechanics and a lot of people who are brand new can feel very useless. And like I said, this was the pilot game, so there wasn't really much space for people to, you know, have differentiation anyway. But as the game is planning on running more events, uh, which I will also get into in a minute, uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem if they maintain this thing of not having a levelling system. Um, which is great, because that means essentially if you decide you want to have a look at this game and go play, uh, you don't have to worry about coming in and not being as useful or as helpful as people who have been there for a while. Uh, you can just get straight in, stuck in, and you will probably be the epic hero, monster, uh, crazy person uh, that you want to be. Um, one thing that was also really good was I thought that the game was actually really accessible for everybody. Uh, there was a combat system in the game, but it didn't involve any sort of physical fighting whatsoever. It was essentially a slightly fancier version of rock, paper, scissors, uh, which in pretty much anyone could take part in. So no one f could be restricted from playing a certain type of role or a certain type of character because they physically couldn't do so. And that's wonderful because you do get games where obviously people are physically restricted from what they can do um, due to their own physical capabilities. And you know, that can kind of be a bit rubbish if that's what they really want to be playing with. So having that system in there was really, really cool. Like I said, the staff being on hand to help with any questions, um, I felt make it all, made it all really accessible. The venue was mostly relatively accessible. There were a couple of steps sort of in places like up to the bar and I couldn't find any sort of, you know, wheelchair access for that also. The venue wasn't 100% ideal, but as most of the game was being held in a singular room, that was very, very minor. And like the dinner was being held in the main banqueting hall as well. So there was only sort of the bar area that really was completely inaccessible to people who can't climb stairs. Um, so all in all, I think that was actually really, really good. And overall, the game was so much fun. There was loads of sort of really crazy moments for my character. I had a rather weird incident at dinner where I couldn't quite slice into my bread roll. And uh, I went off on one in, in a French accent that I can only describe as being so terrible that if France banned me from going to their country for it, I would understand it was not great. Um, and I'm very sorry to everyone who is French and uh, possibly will ever have to hear that. Uh, it was not good. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't get into this bread roll and I ended up starting ranting like, this is not bread! Look at it, I can use it as a weapon! Uh, and that went on for about five minutes and uh, the whole table was laughing, so uh, I'm hoping they, <laughs> they thought it was actually funny rather than me just being weird. I also had a lot of fun bribing goblins with the little chocolate Easter eggs that I brought with me, uh, including the one uh, gentleman who I bribed to not poison one of the witches who was trying to, to cast a spell to free all of the uh, sort of humans who had come into the wild hunt by accident and were, you know, nearly eaten by loads of those sort of monsters and horrors in the game. And I bribed one of the goblins to leave that, that gentleman alone, the witch, and the goblin said, if you give me a third one, I'll tell you a secret. I gave him the third one. He just pointed out the peg that was on my clothing so I paid the guy to tell me that he'd poisoned me. <sighs> the bloody horde. Oh God. 
<laughs> they were mental, so mental. And yeah, yeah, the actual plot of the game was very, very good. We had uh, several moments throughout the game where the dark gods appeared to remind us all of essentially what we needed to be doing in terms of this election. So it wasn't like it just that they told us at the start and then we had to remember like seven hours later because it was a long night. Um, I think, yeah, the game started at about four, half four, and we were there at 11. So yeah, it was a long, long evening. Um, but it was really nice to sort of have, um, you know, the NPCs coming back every so often going, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. Uh, I half achieved my goal for the event, which was to see if I could escape the wild hunt. Uh, I did not escape um, because I still couldn't quite work that out. And I'm a bit of a shy role player as well. So uh, I didn't put myself out there as much as I probably should have. But I did acquire a magic dust um, that allowed me to, so would allow me to essentially leave the wild hunt very temporarily. But I had to come back once the dust had run out because once it had, I essentially would uh, crumble to dust as the 300 years of my life that I'd lived uh, caught up to me aging wise. <laughs> so I managed to get myself a slight reprieve out of the hunt, but Garnet Dubois, my wonderful character, is still tied to the hunt in full. So yeah, didn't quite make it, but there is an opportunity for next time. And um, oh, before I tell you about that though, before I tell you a little bit more about um, future events, there was one funny kind of funny thing. So I did acquire one of these little jars of dust, but there were a few of these little jars going around and a couple of the other chosen, a couple of the other players had got them as well. And what none of us knew, uh, and I only found out the next morning when I went to breakfast with the lovely little LARPA, Gina, and her very kind friend, Chloe. Uh, but Chloe had bought them for essentially Gina because Gina was playing a graveyard earth elemental spirit. Um, she's gonna tell me off and tell me I didn't remember. Our characters didn't interact, so I don't entirely know. Her costume is amazing though. I'll talk, there was this ball gown with, you know, mushrooms and maggots and everything. It was great, yeah, she looked incredible. But they brought these little jars, these little sort of pots of dirt for her, which were sort of graveyard dirt, and they'd somehow made it out in play and people thought it was the dust that, that people needed to leave the hunt. <laughs> Um, but I didn't end up with that. I ended up with something that looked entirely different. So I'm pretty confident I got the right one and everybody else who got one of these little jars, uh, sorry, you're about to uh, find yourselves all crumbling to dust. Uh, so yeah, that was, a, that was a nice sort of little uh, weird giggle uh, we had over breakfast. So yeah, that was kind of a weird giggle I had over breakfast because uh, didn't know that was even happening. There were so many people there and so many people with their own stories who I never even interacted with. There were only three, pe there were only three or four people I knew there beforehand, but none of our characters actually interacted because none of our stories really overlapped, um, which was really, really interesting because there wasn't that many people. There was maybe just over a hundred and we're all kind of walking, working towards the same goals. So it was quite interesting to have people who I knew were there and playing their own games. And I didn't even know what, I don't even know what happened to them entirely. I know that the elementals ended up hatching a dragon uh, of some kind, or they had a dragon egg that's going to hatch, um, which is essentially the theme of event two. <laughs> and yeah, the dead were all trying to free people, like the spirits and all this other stuff was going on. And I had none the wiser because I was trying to stop a load of, you know, innocent humans from being, you know, eaten and consumed by the hunt, which was really fun. The, the, the Chosen were incredible um, at trying to protect them, as were the dead, as were the, you know, gifted witches people. It was so, so fun. And I was so busy, despite not knowing anyone I was interacting with at all. And I, yeah, it was so, so incredible. So yeah, and they're gonna be running more of these events. The next part of the Wild Hunt series is gonna be called The Birth of Dragons. Uh, which it sounds really, really cool. It's going to be a three day event um, held, I think in October next year. Uh, it's a lottery for the tickets because there's been a lot of interest uh, expressed. Uh, so I've popped myself in for one because I would love to play Garnet again and see all these people again and to get in back into that world. So uh, have a look it up on Facebook if you want to come along because I would love to play with you. I think you would love to play this game. It is so much fun. I absolutely, recommend it. So yeah, this is the end of the Wild Hunt series. Thank you very much for sticking with me for it. I'm sorry that I didn't get to do every episode that I wanted to. 
Um, from next video, we're going to be getting back to full on LARP 101 in prep for the 2022 LARP season, which is so close. It's literally six weeks uh, until my next event, which makes me very excited. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy and I will see you on a battlefield soon.